Well, folks, don't do this at home. I'm sorry if I'm a little awkward, a little absurd. No, like, what? <laughs> what happened to our firm foundation? What happened to our house? Hello, and welcome to River Center Church. Today we're gonna start off with some worship, and then we'll dive into the word. And we have some special guests never before seen in our online services. We're gonna have a word from Dan Hirsch, as well as from Dallas. And stick around to the end for some special outtakes from this week. Hello, River Center. Good morning. It's Sunday and it's time for a kid's message. It's the first Sunday of the month, so Pastor Dallas and I thought we would do a kid's message and include you like we normally do on the first Sunday of the month. So hopefully you're all doing really well. It's a great day out, isn't it? It's April. Look behind me, it's snowing. It's about, feels like about 15 degrees outside, but I'm ready for some baseball. You got it. April, what what better than just some baseball during the winter, during, during April time. And, but, you know, it's it's probably not even safe to be playing some baseball outside right now. Uh, it's probably icy, slippery, couldn't see the ball, it's white, and guess what? We're going to go ahead and move our baseball game, do something we shouldn't do, and that's move it inside. So we're going to go inside to play some baseball. Folks, don't do this at home. So let's move inside for some baseball. Hi there, back in the game, back into the game here. We moved inside. Remember, we don't do this at home. So you guys, if you're thinking of having a baseball game inside, definitely don't do it. You're gonna get in trouble with your mom or dad. And it's gonna get you in trouble. We don't wanna do that. So uh, we're, I've got my uh, baseball hat on. You see, I play for Jesus team. It's Jesus is my boss. I got the, wearing the the, the, the t-shirt or my, my uniform of my favorite college team. With all due respect to the uh, people who are Florida Gator fans out there, <clears throat> you know who you are, uh, Arizona's number one. Um, and, uh, we're, you know, we're just going to have a, we're going to have a good time playing some baseball here. You ready? Here we go. Gonna take a couple of swings here. Ready? Whack! Safe! <sighs> Gotta catch my breath. Guess what? I hit the ball. Whack! Here I am, I'm on base, safe. I beat some throw that came over in this direction. And now, when I'm on the base, I am what's called safe in baseball. You know, there's all kinds of things going on in our world right now. You guys know that there's some sort of a virus thing out there. You know that there's, there's, there's people who are sick, you're away from school, your parents might be home, it's probably getting boring for you. We really want to make sure that, that we understand that Jesus is protecting us. He has, he has given us what we call grace. And that just means he's going to wrap his loving arms around us and he's going to keep us safe. People still might get sick, but we just know that his love is going to just take care of us and his love and his grace is going to get us through all these bad times that we're going through right now. And then eventually we're going to just be able to get back to life as usual. We can, at some point, we don't know exactly when, but we'll be able to have children's messages together again at church. And you'll be back in school. But just remember that God's love and grace 
can keep you safe. Why don't we pray about that? Dear God, thanks so much that you sent Jesus to die for us and to, and, and to give us grace, dear Lord. You extended it to us. You love us. You care for us. And dear Lord, just help remind us that you'll be with us no matter what happens, dear Lord. And your grace will get us through this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your presence, God. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come together and worship you and lift your name up.
you're right there with us, teaching our children, helping us, providing for us, keeping us healthy, healing bodies, God, doing all the amazing things that you love to do, God, the things that are in your heart to do. Lord, we thank you that you have not forsaken us, you have not abandoned us, but you are holding our right hand, saying to us, fear not, I will help you. I am right here beside you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am closer than your very next breath. The very hairs of your head are numbered. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for your promises. That they are yes and amen to us who believe. We worship you, Jesus. Your precious name. Hello, River Center Church and friends. Today, uh, we're going to have a word here, a sh short word from Dan Hirsch. He's a missionary, been a missionary to uh, Hungary, Budapest area, and uh, now down in Omaha and looking to uh, plant a church or do whatever other work God has for them. And he has been going through a, a serious and life-threatening medical condition medical situation. And um, I just want to pray for him. Thank you for giving him your attention today. And when he talks about fear today, he knows what he's talking about. He's living it out. It's not just good ideas for him. It's uh, part of his walk with Jesus Christ. I'm so proud of him. Let's pray for him together for healing. God, I just pray for Dan, for Marta and their family. God, we ask you to move in power in his life, to bring healing in him, to bring blessing, to bring fruitfulness in their ministry, in their family, in every part of what's happening. God, help us to receive this message today as we look to you, as we do not give in to fear in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for him. Thank you for your blessing over him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll come back and say a few words when he's done. Hey everybody, this is Dan Hirsch and my trusty wife on the camera behind me. Say hello. Hey. Um, this week, Pastor Dallas, he asked me if, I was, if I'd be willing to give a, a short message or encouragement um, to you guys via video since we're all in the virtual church thing. It doesn't matter that I'm down here in Omaha or wherever I am. I can still greet you without being present. Um, as I thought and prayed on it... Um, I believe that the Lord really felt me to talk a little bit about fear. And, um, you know, fear seems to be a common topic for us right now, given the circumstances in the world and we're all, you know, social distancing and the coronavirus and everything else. Um, but even independent of that, I just felt like the Lord was leading me to talk about fear and trust and rest in him. Um, I believe that fear is is the root of many of our problems as, as believers. For humanity, fear is the root of many of our problems. And I, I believe that it drives many of our negative behaviors. Um, when we look at fear objectively as believers, I think it's even a, a little absurd. Um, when placed in the context of our identity and, and who God has made us to be and the fact that we're children of God, um, it doesn't mean we won't struggle with fear or be tempted by fear or tempted to fall into fear. Um, but ultimately, I think that there's no room for fear if we can dwell in a place of a revelation of, of who we are in God and who God is to us. So whether we fear uh, failure or sickness or finance, lack of finances or, or, or whatever we fear, you know, I believe that God wants us to live in a place without it. Um, so... I'm going to start out talking a little bit about what does fear do to us? Why is it destructive? Why do we want to avoid fear? And uh, I'm sorry if I'm a little awkward with this video thing. It's it's new to me. It's a little strange. Um, but uh, bear with me and I'll probably do okay. Um, you know, in the Bible, there are, there are many examples of situations where fear costs uh, the person or people something. Um, and they can teach us some very valuable lessons. 
I won't go into all the, you know, the scripture and, re- and read the stories themselves. Most of you are probably very familiar with them. Um, <clears throat> but there are three main things that I want to touch on about what fear can do to us, what, what fear can cause us as believers. Um, the first one <clears throat> is I believe that fear can make us disengage from the places and the promises that we were designed to walk in as believers. The, the things that God had designed us to to um, to possess as believers. If we look at the story of the people of Israel, uh, you know they were delivered out of slavery in Egypt. They were they were led across the Red Sea on dry land. They were led through the desert with a pillar of smoke and a pillar of fire to guide them. They were supernaturally provided for um, with with manna. They you know they had seen the miracles of God. They had seen the faithfulness of God through their journey, and they get up right to the cusp of their promise of what God had 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 promised them. Uh, you know the 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 promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And they sent in spies and the spies came back, except for one, of course, uh, filled with fear of the giants that dwelt there. And uh, the people of Israel were racked in that fear and it caused them to not enter into what God had promised them. So they had allowed fear to to cost them what, what God had given them. Um, they had spied out the land, like I said, but they had disengaged from that promise um, because of fear. And uh, so our fear of situations and circumstances can cause us to disengage from our promises. You know, this has cost me in the past where, you know, my fear of, of speaking in public. And you know, I used to have a very big, huge fear of speaking in public. And um, it cost me many years of, of developing a speaking gift or, 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 you know, walking in that place that God had called me to. Um, you know, our own fear can actually end up bringing about the very things that we, we fear to begin with. Um, number two, uh, fear can make us strive to become or do things that we were not really made or supposed to do. Um, this has been a big one for me over the years. Uh, when, when fear can set in so much that, um, you know, we, we become anxious and we become, uh, it, we go into a place of striving to try to make something happen. And the story I want to um, talk about comes from 1 Samuel 13. You don't have to go there or I'm not going to read any scripture from there, but Saul was getting ready, King Saul was getting ready to go to war uh, with the Philistines. And the Philistines had brought 30,000 chariots, which is a ton, 6,000 horsemen, along with a multitude of warriors. Um, and when, when Saul's army saw the, the, the Philistine army in front of them, um, a lot of them hid in fear and even fled Israel altogether. Um, and all the while, Saul was waiting to begin the battle for Samuel to come and give an offering. And that offering was designed to, um, to get the favor of the Lord for their battle, for, to honor God and, and, and get the favor of God for their battle. And when Samuel didn't show up on time, uh, or when, when Saul expected him, Saul took matters into his own hands and offered the burnt offering himself. And it ended up, ultimately, that act ended up costing him uh, his kingdom. It was passed on to David because of that act of Saul. And uh, so when, when Samuel didn't show up on time, Saul stepped out of his place as king and put himself into a place of of a priest and it ended up costing him um, pretty severely. And I think oftentimes when we don't feel like God is answering our prayers quickly enough or we lose trust in, in him, we will strive and work and, and try to make something happen. Um, and in the end, the God, you know, God has called us to trust him and to trust his faithfulness. Um, the third thing that I believe that fear can do towards us is is fear can make us um, angry and resentful of our situations. If we look at um, the story of Joseph, um, Jacob and Joseph and his brothers, uh, Jacob's youngest son was Joseph and he was uh, of, of 12 kids that, that Jacob had. Um, he was about 17 years old. And Jacob favored Joseph all, over all of his sons. He, it says he loved him the most, um, which I, I don't know that I would ever... Uh, verbalize uh, in front of any of my kids, but 
To fast forward through that story for time's sake, his brothers feared the favor that Jacob had towards Joseph. They feared um, the fact that that uh, Joseph had this dream, and and in the dream, uh, all of all of Joseph's brothers were bowing down to him. Um, they resented the fact that that Jacob had honored him with a coat, and they became angry and uh, resentful of that situation. and They feared it. They feared the situation becoming true. So they sought to kill him and ultimately they sold him off into slavery and we know the rest of the story. But fear can make us angry and resentful of our own situation. You know, I've had situations in my own life and you guys probably had too, where you didn't feel like your circumstances were were fair or you you became angry because of... um, you know, something that was going on. And, and I believe that, the God, that God wants us to trust him in, in those times as well. So I'm trying to get through this quickly because I promised him about 15 minutes. Um, but what is the solution to fear? Um, you know, there are several places in scripture uh, that talk about fear, and we really got to focus on, on three of them today. The last one is, is really something personal that God has been doing me, in me over this last season. Um, but first, I want to I want to read from Philippians, Philippians four six through seven. Um, this was one of my first memory verses as a new believer, um, and uh, it, it's so rich. But I'm going to read it um, now. It says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus." So that, that scripture says, be anxious for nothing. So don't fear anything, but instead pray with thanksgiving, which speaks to remembering all that the Lord has done for you and has promised you. And we give, we, as we give thanks to that, God's peace, which we can't fully even understand, will guard our hearts and our minds. So instead of allowing ourselves in fear to go into a depth of despair, uh, pray remembering all that he has done and promised and let his peace guard our hearts. Um, the second one is from 1 John 4, 18. And I think there's a lot more depth to this than I'm even getting, but um, I, I really love this, this passage. It says, um, 1 John 4, 18, it says, there's no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment or cost. So, the one who fears has not reached perfection in love. So in this passage, I, I see that perfect love casts out fear. This isn't just a fear of dinosaurs or snakes. The language of this passage doesn't limit what kind of fear um, perfect love drives out. All fear is cast out by perfect love. And, you know, I, I don't think we can understand perfect love unless we have an understanding of the perfect love giver. Um, it is from a place of seeing ourselves as the recipient of his perfect love and God as the love giver that all fear is cast out. If you think about um, relationships, you know, if you've begun a new relationship and initially there's, there's fear of, you know, will that person accept me? Will that person um, love me when they really see me for who I am? Will they, um, you know, remain faithful uh, to their promises to me? Um, You know, when I look at this in context of God's perfect love, uh, all of those fears, if we understand his love for us, uh, are cast out. They're dispelled. They they hold no weight anymore because we fully trust and understand his perfect love for us. Um, When we understand that, you know, fear can't stay. It can't it can't dwell in us because we we understand and trust the love that God has for us. so the third, the third part I want to talk about um, is really what the, the main thing I wanted to share today. Um, you know, my, my journey um, through what the Lord has been showing me regarding fear lately extends back towards the end of last year. Uh, as many of you know, uh, last December I was diagnosed with a very serious and potentially fatal uh, medical condition. Uh, I've been in treatment and everything's been going really well. Um, things are looking good, and uh, it's been a difficult season for me and, and even for us as a family. Um, when I first heard the diagnosis, I felt really numb and confused, and uh, I didn't see it coming. I didn't expect it. I never even considered uh, this medical situation as a possibility. Um, 
it was strange because I could, I could feel this pit in my stomach begin to form. You know, I, I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but it was almost like an invitation to fear. It was an invitation to let fear consume me. And uh, I knew I didn't want to go there um, to, let, to let that fear consume me. Um, and I chose to trust God. I chose to, to stand in, in his promise and to seek him in the midst of my circumstances. And as I sought the Lord in the middle of this, uh, he began to speak to me and show me some things. And I, I don't have a full revelation of all of this yet, um, uh, but I believe it paints a picture of where the Lord wants our hearts to be and where he was calling me to be. Um, there's a scripture passage that we've almost, we have almost, it's not cliche, but we have almost made it cliche because of how often we quote it and the various circumstances we, we quote it in. But Psalm 23, um, it, you know, we, it's probably one of the most quoted scriptures. Um, but I feel there's a depth of revelation in that passage that I haven't fully understood or realized um, especially with verse 5 is where, where God is really taking me. I'll go ahead and read the entire uh, chapter for context, and then I'll focus in on what, what, I, what I feel the Lord's been teaching me personally. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay, lay, lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the part of that that the, the Lord has really had me focusing on is that first part of verse five, that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And, and you know, when I felt led to that passage and I read that portion uh, of it, it really, it really struck me that in the midst of all that was going around, on around me, and even today, in the midst of all that's going on around us, um, walking through the valley of the shadow of death with the enemy circled and around me, he prepared a table before me, um, you know, all, all the circumstances with our with my medical condition, or all the circumstances with the COVID situation, or you know, all the all the other things that are happening in this world. That in the midst of all of that, that He's prepared a table before us in the midst of it. So think about that for a moment. You know, He's He's calling us to dine with Him. He's prepared a meal for us, and. Uh, you know, to me, what I saw in that, that there was a certain level of attention and intimacy involved in sharing a meal with the Lord, that there's a, there's a, a certain amount of um, being free from the other distractions and focusing solely on um, that, that relationship that is developed as you, as you dine with somebody. Um, to trust him in the midst of things that, that might cause fear or distractions that might come a, a, around us He's calling us to not disengage from him and his promises to not become distracted by those things, but instead to sit at his table and dine with him, to not strive and struggle to try to force circumstances to change. You know, it's, it's my tendency to, to stand up and try to fight and beat down um, things that happen, but instead he's called us to trust him and to sit at his table and dine with him. You know, he's calling us to not become angry or resentful of our circumstances. You know, we're, we're probably getting tired of staying at home. I'm getting tired of treatment. I'm getting tired of uh, not feeling well sometimes. Um, but instead, he's calling us to sit at his table and to dine with him. And I believe that as we do, as we spend time at his table, as we pray and we remember who he is and what he's done for us, um, as we remember all of his promises for us, uh, a revelation of his perfect love will cast out all of our fear. You know, so I encourage us all today. Um, I'm trying to keep this short. Sorry if I went over my time, but um, I want to encourage all of us today, even me, that in our current circumstances or maybe other things that come up in our lives in the future, let's seek the Lord and let him show us his faithfulness. Let's seek him and let us give, give us a revelation of his perfect love. Let's seek him and trust him through our struggle. Let's allow ourselves to sit and to rest 
without distraction and um, have an intimate exchange with the Lord and let us re let him reveal to us his love for us. Um, he's always been faithful and he'll, he'll always remain faithful to us. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Thank you for this opportunity to come and, and greet you even though I can't see you. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to come up and see you guys uh, after this is all over with. Um, but be encouraged and, and seek the Lord and, and, and let him give you a revelation of that rest and, and just sitting uh, with him uh, that, that he's, he's starting to give me. Amen. Thank you, guys. Praise God. I love that word. Lord, let that be in our hearts. Let us be fearless in Jesus' name. I'm just going to spend a little time praying right now. I was feeling the Lord wants us to do this together. Uh, before we do, though, I wanted to read a little story, an account from Elisha's ministry. This is 2 Corinthians, 2 Kings chapter 6, and beginning in verse 14. If you have a Bible, you could turn there real quick. And uh, there was an enemy of Israel that um, his plans for attack kept getting thwarted and he was wondering what was going on he was wondering if there was uh, someone uh, in cahoots with israel and uh, you know working against him within his own administration and lo and behold they came to find out it was elisha who would receive words from the lord and give them to the king of israel so that the israel troops wouldn't be ambushed and things like that so he went after him and found Elisha. That enemy king found where Elisha was staying, took a whole army after him to track him down and kill him. Verse 14 says, He sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? This is Elisha's servant talking to Elisha. What shall we do? This enemy has surrounded us. We're trapped inside the city. We can't go out. So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. What ends up happening is he leads them uh, into into a trap inside Israel, and so this whole enemy army is trapped, and then and instead of murdering them, they feed them, take care of them, and send them home. And lo and behold, this enemy becomes a friend, or at least someone who is no longer actively fighting against Israel. An amazing story. Many lives saved because they were able to see what God was doing. But note just a couple things here that apply to us, I think, at all times. First off, we don't fear because those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. If the Lord is with us, if the Lord has sent his forces to rally around us, which he has for us as believers, he's surrounding us like walls surrounding Jerusalem. He is surrounding us to bless us and protect us and lead us. If that has happened, then those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. God is greater than anything that might attack our society or us individually. He's greater than any lack that might be present in our lives or any, any fear. And this is why uh, an opening of our eyes to the reality of the spiritual world and the reality of who God is and what he's doing really causes fear to just melt away. So when we pray today, when I lead us in prayer and you pray, let us, let's pray this way in faith, understanding that God is powerful. He is able to answer our prayers and even the things that the enemy meant for evil, he's able to turn them for good. Praise God. Even in the middle of this, Elisha's prayer was required to see the miracle happen. The, the forces of heaven were already with Elijah. 
But when the time came to confront, he still took the time. He still understood the essential importance of turning to the Lord in prayer. And then the Lord answered his prayer. Let's pray together. God, we just come before you right now, Jesus. I'm so thankful. We are so thankful that you have won the victory, Jesus Christ, that you are exalted in the heavens, that every thing on heaven and earth will bow its knee to you, that you have called us, that you have not left us alone. And we pray right now for our nation, for wisdom and help. God, I pray for the nations of the, of the earth, God, for, for help and mercy from heaven. God, we pray that you would give our, uh, our state, Lord God, wisdom, South Dakota here as we move forward, our governor and the other leaders. God, we pray that you give us wisdom as leaders of our houses and leaders of different businesses and things. God, that you would help us and lead us and guide us. Father, that you would show us what to do. And God, we thank you that what the enemy meant for evil and for destruction, you are able to turn to good. Move now, Lord. Send healing. Send protection. Bless your people. Help us to be a blessing to our world. Thank you, Lord. Give us clear heads. We just reject fear in Jesus' name. And we pray for healing for our land, for bodies, for minds. And God, we pray that you move even beyond this and do more than we could ask or imagine. God, that you would turn this into real blessing. Thank you for your help, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray again tonight via Zoom. I have posted a link on our Facebook page, River Center Church Facebook page. You can also just message me if you'd like to be part of that tonight at 5. That's April here, the 5th. 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. or so. And uh, we'll spend a few minutes just connecting, everybody getting on. And for a lot of people, this might be the first time you've used Zoom. And um, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we won't have technical glitches of too great of a magnitude. And then we'll spend some time praying. And, um, and it's gonna be wonderful to be able to see each other a bit. Uh, last week, a few of us did some outdoor, an outdoor prayer walk, which was wonderful. And, um, and it'll be great now too. And also this is gonna be practiced for next Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, we are going to have a meet and greet and say hello and then communion together starting at 10 a.m. Easter Sunday on Zoom. So tonight is a great opportunity to make sure you know how it works. If you haven't used Zoom before, you can do it on a smartphone or computer. And uh, it's not difficult, but the first time you use it, there is just a little bit of setup. Uh, if you can't do that, but you're seeing this video, try to just connect with someone who might be, able, might be part of that. Maybe you could worship with them on Sunday morning, just like one other family or something like that. Or um, you can uh, message or call Sarah or I, and we will try to connect you with someone who might um, have the technology or be more techn technologically proficient uh, and uh, be able to hook up to that because I know it's a difficulty uh, sometimes depending on your situation. Um, anyhow, we want you to be a part, if you can though, of our uh, meeting and greeting and communion together uh, on Easter morning. The worship and message we're still going to post to YouTube. Uh, that way if there are terrible technical glitches, um, our service will still be there as far as the worship and the word goes. Um, uh, yeah, that's, so that's what we're going for, we're taking a, a leap, a leap, <clears throat> but uh, being as wise as we can as we leap forward. All right, in light of this, we're making available, starting Friday this week, the Friday before Easter, we're making available some prepackaged communion cups. These are little communion cups with um, the wine, and then you peel them, you kind of peel the top open, and there's a, a wafer there for the bread. Now, you're welcome to just use your own supplies at home as well, Easter morning when we take communion. Um, it, it doesn't even have to be grape juice. I've made a lot of things do at different times, a cracker and something else. But uh, if you would like to pick those up at the church, just talk to someone who has a key, or if you do, 
um, pick up a few. Just pick up what you would need for your family or for whoever's going to be with you actually Easter morning participating in communion there. So um, I will have those out on a table in the foyer in the church Friday. So Friday or Saturday or early Sunday morning, you'll be able to pick them up. So just call your cell group leader, or if you don't know who to call, you can talk to me if you live here in Pierce, South Dakota. And uh, if that would be a blessing, I'm going to pray over those when I put them out on the table. But but the anointing of God is with you. You don't have to have something that I've prayed over. Uh, it doesn't make um, the body and the blood um, something more than when you go to the Lord in faith looking to him. I mean, he accepts that 100%. So, but I will be praying over those and just praying a blessing over your home. Um, so that's an option if you'd like to do that. Hopefully that's going to be a great time together of seeing some different faces and waving at least and saying hi, and then taking communion together online. We'll see how this works. Amen. Amen. All right. Our family has been doing well this week. We've not been out a lot, but we have been out more than in past weeks and still abiding by what we're supposed to as far as distancing and stuff, but um, getting out to pray last Sunday night and play a little bit. And uh, my kids are starting to go a little stir crazy, but still working on homework and such. And I've been working also. I had great, great progress on my personal work academically this week. So I just praise God for that. I've got one more big push one or two more weeks of big push, and then I will be caught up and I'll just have my dissertation left. That's where I'm at on that. All right, we have something special also available on YouTube, God willing, this morning for you, and that is uh, a Kid Zone service. Thank you, Jessica, for leading the charge to make something special available for our kids, uh, you know, beyond what we already had this morning even. It's a separate video you should be able to find on our YouTube channel, River Center Church. And, uh, you know, sit your kids down and enjoy that and worship Jesus together. Praise God. All right, I'm just going to close it there. I just pray God's blessing over you, that he would keep you and protect you. Lord, send your favor over each household. Let each one here shine brightly. God, fill them to overflowing with your goodness. Lord, cause your mercy to just be extended to each household. Make them the first and not the last, the head and not the tail. We pray all this in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Okay, Sarah said you're not a robot. And then <laughs> Levi voice over of Boa at the piano. Let me choose a double word first so it gets You're a good dog. You're a good dog. Come up here. Put your put your picture. He's like something more exciting is happening. I just don't know what it is. Come here, boy eyes. Oh, you do the go boy. <laughs> oh, no. I, oh, okay, yes. When we play um, Super Smash Brothers, I, like... Get back. Get back, get back, get back. Get back. Get back a little more. Back up, back up, back up. Back up. <laughs>